Bosch Thermotechnik, based in Wetzlar and Vernau, Germany, can trace its history back to 1886 when founder Robert Bosch started his company in a Stuttgart backyard. With climate protection at the heart of everything it does, it offers its customers throughout the world solutions for their room climate, domestic hot water and decentralized energy management needs. The company invests more than 170 million euros a year in R&D, which is no less than you would expect of a company whose slogan is invented for life. For modern companies like Bosch Thermotechnik that rely on a network of wholesalers and distributors to provide the level of service and goods that the modern consumer has come to expect, it's essential to have a rebate-based program that not only incentivizes, but is transparent, fair and reliable. But when your rebate program turns into a black box lost in Excel, then it's time to do something. Do you know what was the point at which Bosch Thermotechnic realized there was a problem and wanted to do something to make that situation better? Actually, this software was just part of a bigger project. So we want to improve our pricing structure and then we need a software which support us to do that because um, the last years we were just working with SAP and it was not easy to maintain the conditions, also have like an overview. We were currently in the phase of uh, evaluating how we can make better contracts with our wholesale customers and uh, we started studying what is uh, not working out well at the moment uh, and when we did the analysis we found that we had lots of things we needed to calculate by hand and at the same time, we did not meet the custom requirements because usually they want their money, let's say, in one month at mm -hmm. latest. And it took us like a quarter to actually make the payments because it took so long to calculate it. It took so long uh, to make it transfer to the customer. And we had lots of questions because they didn't understand the outcome of it. And how important are distributors to your business model? They are very crucial because uh, we only sell our products um, through our wholesalers. So we don't sell direct to our installers. We sell it over our wholesalers and the wholesalers sell it then, of course, to the installers. And therefore we have to uh, provide attractive conditions to our wholesalers so they can make a good price for installers and yes, that the product should be affordable for all of us to get like a Bosch heating system. Maybe. You can explain what the rebate system is for the distributors and for your wholesalers. How were you incentivizing them? So first step is the negotiation between the key account manager and the customer. And the second step is then to maintain the conditions to build the accruals in the system. And then during the year, we are doing the payouts then. How was the problem manifesting itself? How were the distributors feeling about the problem? What was the relationship like? Basically, when um, the guy who did all these payments before, we started with my group doing it. Um, everybody knew the guy and the, the customers would call us up and say, OK, I don't understand why I'm getting the money, but I know this guy's doing it right. Yeah? So basically it was based on the personal connection that they believed in the numbers. Yeah? But they also told me they had no chance to actually, well, uh, calculate it themselves. Yeah? And we're talking millions they're getting. Yeah? So this was more built on trust, but not uh, built on transparency and uh, figures and numbers that you can really trace back and understand yourself. You know? And am I right in thinking that this man was about to leave? Exactly. He was close to retirement and uh, basically uh, also many of the things how it was done was just well written in his head, but not documented. And for us as Bosch also it's important to say that it's not depending on the person itself. Yeah? Uh, the answer that you're getting. Uh, so we need to have a transparent solution which is available 24-7 and giving the same numbers every time you click on it. Yeah. And with this kind of personal contact with this one man yeah. with everything in his head, he's leaving. Before he left, what kind of compromises were you forced to make because of this previous system? Well, the, one of the biggest compromises, as I already said, was that uh, you could not really um, support him doing it faster. Yeah? He was basically dealing the whole system on, on its own and uh, we lost a lot of time. Yeah? We were not able to pay in, in, in four weeks time or less. Yeah? We were not able to change uh, contracts or make new deals with the wholesale customers because we told them 
well, it would make sense to make this kind of rebate, but our system cannot deal with it. Yeah? So we were basically reaching the limits of our own internal structure yeah? and could not meet market requirements at the end. What was the reality? What was the real situation in, in terms of time? Well, the, the biggest, uh, the, well, mainly, mainly the payments take place in the first, uh, in the beginning of the year. And for us, it took like the first quarter you know, to have everything done. And then in April, the customers started complaining that they had some questions. You know. So at the end, we were not done with the previous year until June or July. When you were choosing pricing software, why did you choose price effects? We were looking for a partner that would be flexible yeah, and also um, open-minded to basically deal with the complexity that we have in the current context with the customers. That was the most important thing and also we were looking for a partner that was able to meet the project go live in time yeah? because basically you need to make it happen on the 1st of January. Yeah? There's only one time in the year when you actually can deal with uh, changing the contract structure. So how does a rebate manager help you in your everyday work? The rebate manager for us is the daily tool we use basically to make, yeah, to make the payments in time and as transparent as possible for the customers. Yeah. And since the introduction, we're, we're starting to also think of automation more and more. Yeah. And also here we made good progress to see that once you trust the system, you can also reduce the manual checking and the manual controls that we had in the beginning. Yeah. And at the end, our goal is that basically this thing runs like a bot. Yeah. It just makes the payments based on the figures you have on the system and only manual cases uh, need to be treated separately. Tell me something about the SAP integration. How crucial is that to the rebate process? That's very crucial because, of course, we have all our orders in the SAP system. So the SAP still, of course, um, is working with the orders. And there have to be a connection now between the price of X, the accruals and the orders because um, each product the customer uh, will buy, um, the accruals have to be built on this product because on each product you get different uh, rebates at the end of the year, right? And therefore it's very crucial that SAP and Price Fix is uh, working together, of course, otherwise it will not work. So the level of complexity would be difficult to achieve if you didn't have PriceFX and SAP integrated. PriceFX is uh, like our um, flexible front end. Here we maintain all the data. The data is calculated, the rebits are calculated, accruals are calculated. And SAPs take the high complexity data, which we calculate from PriceFX, and then uh, yeah, store it like an SAP and just do the regular things, the standard process, build accruals and create a credit memory request. But a complex calculation of rebates are in the price of X. And how good is the relationship with the sales team in terms of the benefits that they're seeing from price effects? They get the information more fastly from us and that's the result actually. And then they know, hey, what, what's happened? Are you uh, three people more or five people more? And then I'm saying, no, we just have a new software and we are now faster because of that. Using pricing software, what benefit does it bring you directly to the role that you perform? So actually it's our daily business to um, maintain and pay out the, um, the rebates and we save a lot of time and um, we can meet the requirements of our customers because it's really angry to have like a customer on the phone um, who's asking about the rebate and you say, I have no clue <laughs> what you're talking about, right? Because I am not able to type in very fast an SAP customer number or searching for rebate type. So I have to look like in paper sheets or in Excel tables or stuff like that. And with price fix, I just type in the customer name, for example, or the rebate name, and I'm able to answer the, this question right on the phone. And that's a, a big advantage. Did you have any problems working with price effects during the project? Were there any points where you felt that the project wasn't going the way you wanted? Let's say that the, the biggest issues we faced was that we, well, price effects was starting so so quickly on developing stuff. Yeah. Um, we were not used to it. Yeah. For our internal IT, often you you have have a lot of lead time until some things are started. Yeah, and on PriceFX we found that if you give a first input, then the next day they already did some implementation on that. Yeah? And we learned the hard way that you need to be very clear on what you want to do, otherwise you're doing it twice, three times, four times, five times. Yeah? So for us, um, the biggest issue was that we need to make our minds more clearly about what we want 
or are you getting developments that you don't need at the end? Yeah? Project implemented, go live, starting to see results. Comparing the current process to what you had before, what are the positive changes and what are the negative changes? Well, the positive changes are as expected also in the beginning that we save a lot of time and still can do the same amount of work. And also we've seen a high increase of uh, contracts, so we, we acquired new customers we need, to, we need also to pay out and this is still working faster and faster every year. So that's positive. The second thing is that we have no problems to dig out um, all the documentation, why we did the payments. And the third thing is that of course we, can now, we have now more time to focus on improvements uh, and not only working our hours on doing the daily work, yeah, which is also of course, uh, benefit for the whole team. Yeah? That's the positive sides. Um, I can't think of any negative sides at the moment. How would you feel if you were told that you could no longer use price effects? I would <laughs> feel not very good, right? Because then I know I cannot meet the customer requirements again because we need too much time. So before price of X, we get every day like 20, 50 emails and they have to wait like two weeks. Now with the price of X software, we are able to answer these questions within one or two days because we are able to go to the system and find the answer in the system, right? So it's become an integral part of what you're doing. And is there anything that you can currently do because you have price effects that you never imagined that you would be able to do at the initial stages of the project? Well, one thing we did not dream of in the beginning was actually to make like automatic payments yeah, where you only have to click and you rely on the numbers and the rest is done automatically. So many steps in the process have been automated. Exactly, yeah. Can you tell me something about the benefits that you've experienced from moving to the cloud? Well, actually moving to the cloud for us was uh, driven by the fact that we were reaching the boundaries of, with our existing um, on-premise solution. Uh, we found that having more than one year of data in the system, everything was getting slow and, well, also it was very costly for us uh, that we had a, uh, well, not proper sized fixed solution in place. And, and for us moving to the cloud speeded up processes like I think factor three or four, depending on what we looked at. And at the same time, we could also save a lot of money for us as a division. You know? So it was the best decision ever made yeah? and all this um, potential problems you've seen with data security and stuff that was sorted out with a clear process and at the end everybody was happy. Yeah? In terms of measurable results what would you say is the most significant result that you can actually measure and say yes that is a positive change? Yeah we, we put uh, in the beginning of the project some, uh, some key figures in and said what we want to achieve with that and one point was that of course you wanted to achieve a reduction of the process time and this was working out at the end so we basically reduced the time that we need to 50% of the previous uh, working hours or main days that we needed yeah. and now it helps us uh, to well to get to actually work with the current figures we have in the system so even though we have much more customers to deal with we still um, are able to do this without having more people in. And the second most important factor was that we wanted to reduce the manual calculations to like 0%. And when we started a project, like 40% of the calculations were still done with manual inputs. And we don't have this anymore. Yeah. The time saving is mm -hmm. one big result because we have now 50% more time when it's come to a payout rebates. And the second thing is uh, the transparency. Transparency is very good now and because that is crucial um, also when you're talking about to answer the questions of our customers, right? Because if you are looking in Excel sheets or like in papers under your desk, it's difficult to answer these questions right in time and therefore I think these two things are the most important things.